count which is definitely used the most uh, it is used to return really the number of records in a table the next one is sum which returns the total sum of values in a column so if you're trying to maybe add up um, sorry about that if you're trying to add up uh, let's say uh, maybe the number of uh, records you sold or number of items you sold you could use the sum function the next one is min which returns minimum value in a column um, and then there's max which is the opposite which returns the maximum value in a column uh, avg is used to return average and then uh, f uh, f these functions can also be used uh, essentially in the WHERE clause. So I will show you how to do that in a minute. And then the last thing we talk about is using these functions with GROUP BY, uh, which can be a little bit tricky and I do get this uh, asked a lot so I figured I would cover this also. So enough uh, discussion, it says demo please, so let's uh, jump right into uh, SQL Server. I am using uh, SQL Server 2008 for this demo and I am using uh, AdventureWorks database uh, which is as you know a sample database from Microsoft uh, really I think we are looking at two main tables so let me just uh, uh, cover the structure of these tables real quickly the first one I'm gonna be looking at is the sales customer so if you go down to that and uh, I will just uh, essentially show you what the uh, structure looks like it's going to uh, contain information on a customer, things like customer ID, uh, possibly um, what location they're in, and uh, dates and whatnot. So there's not too too many columns in here. I believe the one uh, we'll uh, be later looking at is uh, possibly territory ID. So that's one table, and the other table that we are going to be looking at is the sales dot sales order detail. Uh, this was basically essentially the uh, the table that's going to con contain the line items for a sales order so let's say you know if a customer orders something and they have uh, s you know separate line items this is where it will go so as you can see uh, it contains sales order id uh, product id what the customer bought and you know what is the price unit price line item price so pretty standard stuff uh, quantity ordered so a little background about uh, these tables now I do have uh, essentially this script uh, here and I will really go line by line so that you can have a clear understanding of what I'm talking about. So the first uh, line that I'm going to execute, essentially query that I'm going to execute is a regular select statement. This is essentially going to return the number of records in sales.customer table. So I will go ahead and highlight this and run execute and down here on the right bottom corner you'll see the number of rows returned so it's 19,820 so let me go ahead and write that real quickly here and the reason I did this is uh, actually let me minimize all of this so we have maximum working area and so the reason I did this is before I use the count function which as I mentioned is uh, used to num uh, return number of records in a table so now this you know if if this is accurate we should be getting the same information down here so I'm going to go ahead and select this and execute it which by the way is if you hit the F5 key in SQL Server that's what's used to execute it now notice that it returned uh, the same number so count is definitely uh, like I mentioned a very popular function uh, you know you're trying to find how many records are uh, in a table now what I could have also done is something like add a where clause in here uh, and whatnot but uh, you get the idea it's not uh, limited to just using um, using on a table now interestingly uh, here you'll notice I used an asterisk sign also known as star that's what I call it um, now if I did this instead of using asterisk I'm calling using person ID and let me go ahead and execute this interestingly I am getting 19119 records so what does that mean why you know why is this different well the key is that if this field has let's say null values in it uh, which is certainly possible because uh, this is a foreign key in that table then it will not count those records but when you're doing a star uh, you're not specifying a column and th this actually 
is what you need to use if you are trying to get all the rows in a table as you will get a different um, uh, row count here so like I, like it says it does not count null values so I just wanted to add that and now another and another point I added here is it says also compare execution plan so uh, this is again a side topic but uh, you know from a performance tuning point of view uh, I'm going to go ahead and select this option which is going to include the actual execution plan and let's go ahead and run this real quick And this is going to take a little bit longer as it is trying to compute the stats. If I go to this tab down here, it says ex execution plan, and I basically hover my mouse on this. The column I'm interested in is where it says estimated subtree cost, and notice it says 0 0.06. So let me just um, add that down here. And this again, like I mentioned, it's it's a side note, but it's definitely, you know, if you work with databases, uh, this is definitely uh, one of those little um, items that you should be aware of. Now, I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, this is still enabled. I'm going to execute this. And if I come over here, notice now the estimated sub subtree cost is 0.12, uh, which may not seem like a big deal but you know if you have instead of 20,000 records let's say you have 20 million rows this this does add up to quite a bit of difference as it's taking twice as much work for SQL Server to perform that so I wanted to add that point in there um, as far as uh, comparing executions so we just covered uh, we covered count which is like I mentioned count is used to return number of records in a table the next one is uh, we're going to be doing basically uh, these three which is sum min and max so let's uh, you know let's go over those real quickly so the sum is the arithmetic total of data in a column so here what we are doing is we are selecting three columns which is sales order ID product ID and unit price from the sales dot sales order detail table and we're limiting it to uh, this particular order so let me go ahead and select these and I just want you to uh, just take a minute to look at this data so basically here uh, this this should be the same for as it's just one order uh, here are all the different product IDs that are included and this is what we're going to be focusing on so uh, notice the, you know the unit price is all over the map so now if I wanted to do a sum what that's going to do is for these 12 rows it is going to add all of this uh, information and give us one final number so let's go ahead and do that now here is so that, that's basically the total for um, all of those uh, items and so you know some is typically used I would say you know on numeric data it wouldn't make sense to use it on text data uh, so that's sum. Next one is min, which really returns the minimum value in a column. So if you were paying attention, you probably noticed that if I run this, uh, I'm getting essentially the minimum price of the really one one row for that uh, product that had the minimum price. If I go back here to this list, you'll notice that uh, this item right here, which is using product ID. 712 is going to be uh, our minimum. I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, disable that part because it's still doing the query execution plan. So once again, uh, running the minimum will find the minimum for the unit price column.